What's up, Tech Art? How's everybody doing? We're going to continue on today with our M4 Mac Mini Series, and we're going to talk about AI. It's a new buzz, right? There's lots of ways you can use AI at home, locally, so you don't have to send your data all the way up there to ChatGPT or, God forbid, China and DeepSeek. We're going to use three different applications that I think are pretty cool to play with AI, and it all runs on your Mac Mini, baby. Let's jump on into the main monitor, and we'll have some fun, and see what we can do with AI on your new M4 Mac. Boom! We're gonna take a look at a few different apps. The first is LM Studio. It's the easiest way to get started with local LLMs, and it has all the gooey goodness built right in. Next up is Olama. It's a little bit more powerful, but without add-ons, you get the terminal, baby. Dealing with the command line. However, we can use Docker to get a GUI for it, and we'll show you that. The third app is going to be Warp. This is a terminal emulator, and I know some of you guys don't like to live in the terminal, but whether you're a bash master or a script kitty and brand new to the terminal, Warp will make it super easy. Let's go take a look at the first LM Studio. We can download this for the M series Mac. You'd end up with uh, this DMG. You just double click it and drag the icon to install, but I already have it installed. So let's open up LM Studio. Boom! I'll go full screen so you guys can really get in there. And we can just click get your first LLM. It suggests to us DeepSeek R1. And I agree, that's the best LLM to start with. So I'll let that bad boy download and catch y'all in a minute. Booyah! Oh yeah, right after it finishes, we can start a new chat and we're in. Super simple. You can ask it any questions down here and interact with the model. You could say, tell me a story and it would tell you a little story. Maybe we'll do that in a second. You can come over here and click the developer tab. This will allow you to get a little deeper into the LLM. Oops, no models are loaded. So right down here, we can say load DeepSeek R1. Now we can go to the developer tab and over here, we get model information. We can change the inference, um, have different presets, different system prompts, use this field to provide background instructions to the model, such as a set of rules, constraints, or general requirements. And the temperature is how much randomness to introduce. Zero will yield the same result every time, while higher values will increase creativity and variance. So if you're not getting the results you want, you can change these settings. And yeah. LM Studio lets you dig into your local models. I believe we can add more. We can go over here to the My Models part, and I think we could search. Let's search for like Llama maybe. Click Search. And yeah, it suggests right here, Llama 3.3, 70 billion. That might be a stretch. For our M4 Mac minis, you can run the 7 billion parameter models all day long, and you can even bump up to the 14 billion model parameters, which would be a little bit better to uh, interact with. LM Studio is really cool because it tells you what the model is. It gives a description. So back to our model, uh, we can just tell it, tell me a short story. DeepSeek always thinks first. It explains to itself how it's going to answer your question, but you don't have to pay attention to that output if you don't want to. And boom, out comes your short story. In a faraway land of enchanted hollow where mountains tower like giants, and I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but you have your short story. So that's LM Studio, a super easy way to get started with LLMs, and you don't have to worry about anything. If that's enough for you, push stop, like the video, and go home. Otherwise, you might come over and check out Olama. Olama gives us a little more precise tuning and a little more power on our LLMs. However, if you just download Olama, you'll interact with it through the terminal. Maybe a warp AI terminal. So you go ahead and download it. Double click on olama.app and drag and drop, but I already have it installed, so I can just click on the olama icon. You see there's a little llama in your taskbar, and you could go to your terminal and type olama list. That'll list the LLMs that you have installed. You could type olama pull deep seek r1 colon latest, and that would pull down your LLM, but I already have them installed. You could run olama run deep seek r1 latest, and you get a prompt right in your terminal where you can interact with the LLM. But it's all in text mode, and that's no fun, right? Well, let's solve that. You type slash by to get out, and 
we can go over to Open Web UI. Now this is the GUI front end for Olama. So it'd be just like LM Studio, but we have to add this. The easiest way to get going with it is to do a Docker container. So you come over to docker.com and download Apple Silicone. Again, you'd get a Docker DMG, double click that, drag and install. Then you can run Docker. Now you'll notice that I already have Open Web UI installed. However, I would suggest on the first time that you copy this Open Web UI Docker run command. Also, if you're running an NVIDIA GPU, make sure you copy the correct command down there and we'll paste that in. And I already have it installed, but that would pull everything down. And from then on, you could just use your docker.desktop and you can start it all within this Docker desktop GUI. So Open Web UI is running and that means we can go over here and type in localhost colon 3000. Boom! Olama and Open Web UI open. You can click right up here and select from any of your models that you have installed. I'm just using DeepSeek Latest. And you could go down here and say, tell me a story. And it would do so just like it did in LM Studio. However, let's take a look at controls. Now here, we have all those options just like we did in LM Studio, like to modify the system prompt and to do all this other tweaking. However, there's a lot more here under the hood. Let's go over here and this time we'll click on the admin panel and there will be a lot more tweaking that we can do here. If we go down to settings, you can come down here to I think documents. Yeah, this is an area where you can literally upload your own documents. It's called RAG, some kind of augmented reality. What is it? RAG AI. Retrieval augmented generation. What that means is you can upload text files, PDF files, or other data, and then the LLM that you're working with will pull from that data to give you correct answers. So, you know, if you had some old computer software that isn't mainstream and it has its own programming language and there's documentation for that, like Mystic BBS software, you could upload it here and then your LLM would be able to have that information at its disposal. At any rate, Olama and then using Open Web UI gives you the ability to do a lot more with your local LLMs. Remember, you're not using uh, DeepSeek.com or ChatGPT.com. This is all running on your Mac Mini. Tell us a story about the best YouTube channel, TechHard. Ha ha ha. So on to our final app. One of the coolest new AI terminals in the world. Oh, look at that. A beautiful story about the TechHeart YouTube channel. In the quiet town of Silicon Valley, there lived a young YouTuber named Tech Human. Is that me? <laughs> As Tech Human's channel grew, so did his ambition. Eh, maybe. All right, let's go take a look at Warp. Show you how to close out of Olama. Uh, first, we'll go to Docker Desktop. We'll stop the Open Web UI container. Then we can fully exit out of Docker Desktop but Olama is still running, so make sure you quit Olama. All right, Bob's your uncle. And all right, now we have the warp terminal to take a look at. You can go to warp.dev and click the download for Mac icon. Same as before, that'll give you a warp.dmg that you can just double click and then you'll just drag and drop the warp icon to your applications. Bob's your uncle, baby. If you go over to docs.warp.dev, they have a really good documentation that gets into everything, basically, all the features. But for us, let's just dive in to full screen mode. I'm gonna exit out of this, I'll quit here, and there we go. We have warp right here in all its glory. I created a text file, so I'm gonna do bat. Ooh, look at that. And then we can see one of the warp features right here. Command completion. You see that? It knows that I did this command before, so I can just push the right arrow, and then boom, get that whole thing. Now let's show some of the quick cool features about this. We can split the pane right with Option D, and we can split a pane down with Shift Option D. Boom, look at that. Now we got all these different windows. You can just move your mouse around, or you can use Option and the bracket keys to go forward or backward. Pretty nice, right? You can do Control R, which will bring up a command search. And I really like the history. And you just get a nice graphical history of all the commands you've recently run. That's Control R. You can also access your workflows, notebooks, AI command suggestions, environment variables, and AI queries. Wow. 
there's an agent mode with option I, and that brings up the different things you can do in warp. Now I haven't really gotten this far, but this is agent mode, and you can toggle that with option I. There's a command palette with option P, and this is really cool. You can search for anything in here, so let's just do like toggle. This is all the different toggle stuff you can do with the warp terminal emulator, and you can search for anything in here. What's this warp drive? Well, let's talk about it. You can do option backslash, and this is your warp drive. You can store notebooks here, you can store workflows here, and Here's a notebook. So I have a command that removes quarantine on Mac OS apps. And it's just a command here, but I can quickly copy that and use it. Close that down here. That was a notebook. Here's a workflow, even though I don't use these yet. So there's these different workflows you can create. You can have like variables of your name. Now I don't know how to do this yet, but uh, these are workflows. Here's getting started with notebooks. It tells you all about it, but that's the warp drive. And again, we can toggle that with option backslash. Pretty cool, right? Once you get these keyboard shortcuts down, you can whiz right around your terminal. And let's check out some of the AI. So see here in this, in this pane, it says try typing natural language instead of a command. Okay. Maybe I wanna ask it, how can I LS or list files, files by their date? AI goes to thinking, it's using Claude 3.7 and it tells us the user wants to know how to list files sorted by their date. I can provide a command that uses the ls command, blah, 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 blah. And it tells us to do ls dash lt. Oops, I should have gotten out of there. It said ask a follow up. So I should have done backspace first. No, two backspaces. All right, there you go, there you go. And now I can do that command. You can do way deeper stuff too. I mean, basically anything. If you have any Linux command questions, just type it in there. And Warp has the ability to run certain commands, but it's really neat to have an AI in here. And I don't use that feature a lot. And some people don't like those AI features, but it's here and that's really, really cool. I'm super impressed with this Warp terminal and I like it. Let's check out settings. We can do option comma. Okay, and here's our settings. You can turn the AI off. You go right up here to AI, you tap here, and you have none of the AI stuff. Boom, it's all gone. And see down here, it says which commands we can and cannot run in its suggestions. There's Teams. I wanna show you this actually. We'll touch back on this in one minute. You can change your appearances. And I'm on a Matrix um, theme right now, and that AI completely designed it. I just said, design me a Matrix theme. And it created this, what we're looking at. Real quick, I'm gonna jump out of settings. I'll just go back to our other tab and I'll do control option T for the theme selector and let's check this out I found a cool one up here here how about koi fish look at that dude got really cool themes how fresh is that I think it looks really good jump right back into settings that's appearance, you have features. I mean, there's just so much here, man. This is not the terminal for you if you just like basic bash and leave me alone. But man, this sure is nice to use. Here's all of your keyboard shortcuts. You can go through and change or just see what they all are. What's Warpify? Configure whether Warp attempts to Warpify. Hmm. There's referrals. Actually, I'm gonna put up my referral code right here. If you're watching this video, please use it so I can get a free t-shirt. Oh yeah, here's my link, but I'll put it real big up on the screen, baby. Shared blocks, I'm gonna show you what blocks are in a minute. Privacy, you can turn off reporting, and about. Let's get out of settings. Now, what are blocks? Let me go down here, and I'll just do an LS. I'll move to my downloads. Oops, I'll move to my downloads. I'll do another LS. Each one of these are blocks, okay? So anything that, you, any command that you enter creates a block. And then you can come over here and click the three dots, and then you can select share block, create a link. So here's our link, right? Let's copy that. Let me pull up my Safari, and I'm gonna open this up, and I'll paste it in here. And then check this out, there's that block. It's that command and the output. So if you're working on something and uh, you have a question and you wanna send it to a team member, boom, Bob's your uncle, baby. How 2025 is that? Pretty gangster. You know, you could share a whole block with your team and uh, see what the consensus is. So nice. Oh, here's another thing I wanted to touch on. If you look at our prompt, it's kind of weird. Like it has this AI information up here. I think workflows here, you know, it has this warp stuff. Let's go into settings again. 
and let's go down to appearance and we'll come to the prompt right here let's click that so this is a warp prompt and you can change this whether you use you know python conda git all that stuff so this is the warp prompt but let's just say you want a standard shell prompt ps1 so let's save that we'll go out so you can do whatever you want here here's your normal more like uh, linux or bsd prompt so anything you want to do, you got it, baby. History, if you just press the up button, it, it's way nicer than the text mode. I am really digging on warp, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. It's a cool terminal, baby. Are you going to check it out? Again, make sure you use my referral link. And dang, dog, that's how I'm running AI on my new M4 Mac Mini. Gangster sauce. I'll catch you guys for the outro. Oh, yeah, baby. So that was pretty cool guys. That's how I'm running AI on my M4 Mac Mini. Let me know in the comments below how you're running AI on yours. Would you like me to do a video about AI rags so we can put our own data into our LM and make our own thing? Let me know and until next time, tech heart, oh!